Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zhong Han from Berkeley. Super excited to talk about SkyPilot, which is an intercloud broker system we've been building at Berkeley, and it's for Sky Computing. And this is a big team project. Uh, it's a joint work with a bunch of great folks here uh, from UC Berkeley's Sky Computing Lab. So let's get started. Today's clouds create silos. Applications are mostly developed for particular clouds, and afterwards, they are locked in. And we argue that this is highly undesirable for a few key reasons. One, the applications cannot easily use better software services or better hardware, better pricing elsewhere. This is going to be increasingly relevant because cloud providers today are trying to differentiate themselves from each other by offering uh, these unique offerings. Moreover, applications have lower resource availability. The most recent example of this is the current AI race. We are seeing cloud providers running out of GPU servers to rent. There are also quite a few business-related concerns about the locking. If a business has fewer execution sites to choose from, it will be harder to meet the data residency and data sovereignty regulations. The business is also more vulnerable to large-scale outages, and it has lower negotiation leverage to get a better deal because choice is power. So Sky Computing was recently proposed to address these challenges, and it is about enabling transparent multi-cloud. We want to go from this picture to this picture, where applications develop on top of the sky and run on top of the sky, which is a collection of clouds, should easily use one or more clouds. One key feature of Sky Computing is it performs automatic placement of applications based on requirements and objectives. For example, the requirements can be specifying software and hardware resources, location constraints, and so forth. And the objectives can be minimizing time or cost or even uh, carbon emissions to execute the workload. The same application uh, should be able to use a different cloud based on the timing of the submission because the requirements can change and the pricing and availability on the cloud provider side can also change. Finally, the same application instance should be able to use more than one cloud at a time, and we will show some examples of this later. So this all sounds good. The question is, how do we achieve it? How do we make sky computing happen? One seemingly natural choice is to do standardization. We can imagine building a portability layer implemented by every cloud. For example, uh, there are current and prior proposals pr pursuing this approach. But we argue these proposals have limited success so far for a few reasons. One, such a portability layer is typically low level. They focus on uh, infrastructure as a service, and that means the higher level, uh, more proprietary services are not available. Moreover, such a portability layer, if it were to support all the cloud services, uh, of which there are hundreds, it would be very complex. Perhaps most importantly, cloud providers do not have the incentives to support the standardization because they don't want to become commodities. So in this work, we propose the idea of intercloud brokers, which is a mechanism to kickstart sky computing. And really, the key idea here is to match application demands with the best cloud services that can support these demands. And let me show a simple example. Say we have an application with these three stages secure data processing, ML model training, and ML model serving. We submit this application to the intercloud broker system, which should have the freedom to place these stages on different clouds for execution. For example, if the secure data processing stage requires using Intel SGX, currently only Azure out of the top three clouds uh, offers SGX instances, so the broker will send the first stage to Azure. For training, the broker may send it to Google uh, to take advantage of the TPU accelerators, which are highly optimized for uh, model training. And for inference, it may send it to AWS, because AWS has these custom uh, inferential chips for low-cost inference. So we see that applications in this way can still use the unique and proprietary services available on certain clouds. Moreover, let's say in this collection of clouds, in this sky, so to speak, and there's, there's another cloud coming along offering a new service. And let's imagine this service off, uh, is offering better price or performance for serving workloads. 
then the broker should have the uh, freedom to notice the performance improvement and decide to send, send some serving workloads to this new cloud. And we see that clouds can still compete to provide better price and performance, and this way they do not become commodities. Finally, we want to know that uh, we can have multiple brokers in the future, uh, each focusing on different workloads. And this is very beneficial because then uh, a single broker doesn't have to support all the hundreds of cloud services. In summary, uh, the idea is to use in the cloud brokers to create a two-sided market between the applications and the cloud services. And we want to use this market force to drive sky computing. So the question is, is this feasible? Well, to answer this question and show immediate uh, benefits, we build a system called SkyPilot, which is an intercloud broker focusing on compute-intensive batch jobs. And here's a high-level overview. The user submits a program and a resource requirement. The requirement can be the GPUs require CPU, memory, and uh, location constraints. And we make no assumptions about the programming frameworks used in the job. So given this information, the system will figure out the best cloud to execute this job and uh, go, goes ahead and foresee the execution. In the rest of the talk, I'm first going to talk about the requirements, what is actually required in building out such a broker system. Then I will talk about the architectural and interface choices we made in SkyPilot. And finally, I will show some use cases to answer the question whether this is useful or not. So let me start with the requirements. We know today's cloud offerings are very diverse. Um, here we are showing out of the top three clouds, there are hundreds of zones and tens of regions. Uh, more importantly, these locations are very different. They have different offerings. Their pricing can also differ quite a bit. Here's one example. We are looking at a particular hardware, uh, this eight-core general purpose instance type across three clouds, right? And we are plotting the pricing ratio between, uh, from the most expensive to the least expensive zone. And we see that there's a up to three times difference for on-demand pricing and up to t nine times difference for uh, spot pricing. So there's a lot of heterogeneity here. So the broker system should automatically uh, organize all these diverse offerings and expose this complex information to the applications in an easy to use manner. And because of the sheer number of choices, it should also automatically pick out the best location and offering to execute uh, each application. The second key requirement is to handle availability changes in the cloud. So here we are plotting a real user workload trace. Uh, we are showing the number of preemptions over a period of eight days. We see there are quite a lot of preemptions happening in total, but if we zoom in into each day a little bit, the preemptions in, in each day are quite different. So we know these uh, availability changes are un unpredictable. The same thing applies for spot GPU VMs as well, and this is on another cloud. And here we see even longer periods of unavailability. So the broker must dynamically handle such availability changes as well as unavailability. Given these requirements, we designed the following architecture. Uh, the user submits a task, a resource requirement, and an objective. The first thing we do is to take this high-level requirement and filter it in a table called service catalog. This catalog records all the uh, hardware details across clouds, across regions, uh, what locations offer this hardware and their pricing. And we make it periodically refresh so we can get up-to-date information. So this will return a set of feasible offerings. So these are concrete uh, zones and regions and uh, instance types that can satisfy this request. And we pass these candidates to an optimizer component, which is responsible for picking out the best choice. Here we use an ILP solver, which minimizes the uh, total cost or time. And importantly, here we take into account any data egress, right? So assuming the task has an input data set on AWS S3, if we consider pasting it on GCP, we will uh, take into account any egress time or cost. The optimizer will output the best choice, uh, the location and instance type, and we will pass it to a provisioner module. And the provisioner module will uh, implement an auto failover mechanism to handle the unavailability that we talked about. 
So for example, if we go to AWS, a particular region, and we try to provision some resources, and let's say re uh, AWS returns an error saying out of capacity, we will trigger re-optimization to ask for the next best location and uh, instance type. And in general, this can be on the same cloud, perhaps a different region, or it can be on a different cloud. And we will fail over and try in that second location. So once the cluster has been provisioned, we will pass it to an executor backend to set up the uh, environment, run the job, and clean up. In terms of the interface the user see, let's consider a typical ML project. We may have a working directory containing our code. We may have a setup script installing our dependencies. And finally, we may have a main program to run. So SkyPilot offers a YAML interface uh, that is easy to use to specify these uh, components. And the user can optionally also say the resource requirements that we discussed. We also offer an uh, interface to specify the object store buckets to be used for the job. And this is important for inputs and outputs. With this specification, uh, the user can use a single CLI command, sky launch, to launch this task to the sky. And behind the scenes, the broker system will take care of these uh, heavy lifting actions that we talked about. We also have a programmatic API in Python, and we have support for a workflow of tasks as well. So now let me switch gear to uh, talk about a few examples, first in experiments, then in real world usage. The first example is an ML pipeline that we have seen before with these uh, stages. For the first stage, we require using SGX to securely process some user data, and then we will uh, fine tune a BERT model on this data, and finally, we perform offline inference. For the second stage, we allow the broker to use Google's TPUs or other cloud's GPUs. And similarly, for inference, we allow it to use AWS Inferentia and other GPUs. Our baseline here is single cloud only execution because Azure is the only cloud offering uh, SGX out of these th three clouds we compare to Azure. And here's the time and cost for the uh, execution. In contrast, the broker can use all three clouds to take advantage of their unique hardware. And we see that even after taking into account the egress time and cost, the broker execution is much faster and cheaper. Now, in addition to a pipeline of stages, which we can distribute across clouds, here we show even a single job can take advantage of multiple clouds for higher availability. So next, I'm going to play this animated training curve for this ML job, uh, which is uh, using spot instances across clouds. So what happened here was we started the training in AWS, a particular zone in AWS. The job quickly got preempted due to unavailability. And then the broker migrated to the second zone and then to the third zone. And at that point, the entire AWS ran out of the particular GPU required here. So the broker system decided to migrate the job from AWS to GCP to finish the training. Compared to uh, on-demand instances, this execution is actually uh, quite a lot cheaper, which is not surprising, right? But we also compare to a policy uh, that is using single region, the, sing the same starting region in AWS. And the broker execution is much faster. And this is because we don't have to wait in that region to wait for the uh, availability to come back. And importantly, providers actually have some native solutions for spot instances, like spot fleets or managed instance groups. And these solutions are all confined within one region. So they cannot go beyond one region, let alone one cloud. Finally, here we show that even single cloud workloads can benefit from sky computing by utilizing multiple regions. So here is a user's uh, bioinformatics workload running on spot CPUs. Again, uh, we allow a uh, single region to use one region inside GCP. And SkyPilot can use multiple regions inside GCP. And we see that uh, SkyPilots can cut the make span by half, finish the jobs two times faster. And this is because using multiple regions uh, to get much fewer preemptions. So those are the uh, use cases in experiments. Uh, in terms of real world usage, we open sourced the system last year on GitHub. Uh, it is available at this URL, and it is also quite easy to install using uh, pip install. 
we, we have about 20 contributors so far, and the users come from more than 10 organizations and growing. We, we saw quite a lot of users doing ML training and uh, bioinformatics workloads. Interestingly, some users also built a war damage assessment tool. So this is analyzing what buildings in Ukraine were damaged during the war and using SkyPilot to launch these heavy computations. Recently, we also uh, released this Vacuna large language model, which is the first open source, source chatbot with high quality, and it was trained using SkyPilot on the cloud. From the cloud provider side, when we just released a system, we supported AWS, Azure, and Google. But in the last few months, engineers from IBM and Samsung actually were adding support for their clouds into SkyPilot. We also collaborated with Lambda Cloud, which is a low cost uh, GPU cloud provider to add support for it. And recently we have been working with NSF Cloud Bank to allow academic labs to uh, use the clouds more easily and cheaper. And going forward, we are very excited to work with more cloud vendors to add support for uh, their clouds, and we hope this will make the sky naturally emerge. So in summary, we presented the idea of intercloud brokers, which is a mechanism to kickstart sky computing instead of uniform standards. And the idea of these brokers is to match application demands with the best cloud services that can address these demands. We wanted to show the feasibility and benefits of this approach, so we built a system called SkyPilot focusing on compute intensive jobs. And we encourage the community to try out the system at this URL, skypilot.co, and we look forward to conversations. Thank you. <laughs>